So the basic seven are, and we'll talk about the specifics of, of these, what you have to do, but it's diet, exercise, sleep, stress, brain training, detox, and some targeted supplements. Those are the basic seven. Looking at, at lifestyle interventions, because there's so many lifestyle factors that, that are led to believe to, to dementia and other neurodegenerative illnesses in, in later life. Could you talk about some of the lifestyle interventions that, in your experience, have been the most beneficial in staving off the risk of, of Alzheimer's and other diseases? Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, and so there are seven basics. We think of these as the B7, the basic seven. And then there are things that are specific to people. So you ultimately, you want to have, the most important thing you can do is get evaluated. That's the key. I get a cognoscopy, find out what are your risks, what your genetic risks, your biochemical risks, your toxicological risks, et cetera. But you can start with some basics. And then the hope for the future to make it most efficient is that everybody would do the basics. And then those people who slip through the cracks, okay, now you're going to do more things. And then you have a, a pyramidal sort of approach so that only a few people have to get these very extensive workups. Most of us can do well with just the basics. So the basic seven are, and we'll talk about the specifics of, of these, what you have to do, but it's diet, exercise, sleep, stress, brain training, detox, and some targeted supplements. Those are the basic seven. So you want to, and you know, critical things for each of these. Now, those aren't a guarantee, but for most people, they will do very well. And the goal, of course, is to keep everyone sharp to 100. So for diet, you it, it turns out that the diet that works the best is a plant-rich, mildly ketogenic diet with lots of phytonutrients, lots of fiber, improving your gut microbiome, healing any leakiness of your gut. These, this is the way that's worked the best. And for exercise, what's worked the best, interestingly, is EWOT, exercise with oxygen therapy. Uh, and the, some people like to use the, the uh, restriction bands, so-called katsu bands. Um, these were used by some of the Olympic athletes. Uh, it basically gives you more bang for your buck. Um, for sleep, Professor Matthew Walker from UC Berkeley has written a whole wonderful book, why we sleep. Uh, and so, you know, his, he goes into their, their critical pieces. And so you want at least an hour each night of sl deep, slow wave sleep. So you want to get into that deep sleep, which you tend to get earlier in, in the night. And then you want to have at least an hour and a half of REM sleep. These are both critical and they're critical for detox and they're critical for memory formation. They're critical to prevent neurodegeneration. And of course, they're critical to remove uh, damaged cells and damaged fragments and things like that. The glymphatic system was, you know, a discovery of a few years ago, uh, which has been very interesting in terms of keeping your, your brain healthy. And then you want to manage stress. We were made to have a little bit of stress and then resolve it. You have some stress, you resolve it. That's okay. Have some stress, resolve it. But so many of us now have this chronic stress and that damages your brain. It actually shrinks your brain. As long as your amygdala is on high alert and like, oh my God, you know, we're under assault. You can't back down. You can't actually relax. It, it turns out to be very helpful. So things that as a scientist, I used to laugh at like meditation and things turn out to be, you know, I can't deny the data. The data are striking. They're good for neuroplasticity. They're good for blood pressure. They're good for your cortisol. They're good for your lifespan. They're good for you know, myocardial infarction prevention, all those things. Um, so whatever it is that helps you to deal with your stress, whether it's Shinroku, you know, getting out and forest bathing, whether it's you know, TM, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's um, uh, yoga, uh, or whether it's music, whatever you like, get that heart rate variability up. And I do think, by the way, Joe, I think that wearables are gonna be one of the best things for prevention of chronic illness. Being able, I mean, look at what we can do now. You can follow your heart rate variability. You can follow your sleep stages. You can look at your microbiome, both oral and gut microbiome. You can look at your telomere length. You can look at so many of these things um, you know, do you know? Close your rings every day, and you know, look whether whether you got your ten thousand steps in. So there, it's amazing what we can do, and this is going to be a huge help 
in reducing these complex chronic illnesses because so many people were living on the edge. They didn't realize they had virtually no heart rate variability. They're under stress all the time. They're not getting much sleep, all these sorts of things. So that's another piece. And then of course, uh, brain training, as I mentioned before, a beautiful work from Professor Mike Mersnick, who is the father of brain training and, and uh, started Posit Science and does Brain HQ, uh, which has been very helpful. And we included that in our in our protocol for uh, the tri clinical trial we did. Um, and then detox. Uh, I was not taught uh, as a training neurologist how important these toxins are. Yes, everybody knew about you know massive mercury exposure and things like that. But people didn't realize, especially some of these biotoxins that we're exposed to for years and years. And then finally, some targeted supplements and you know, making sure you have optimal levels of vitamin D and magnesium, omega-3s, that you don't have a high omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. You, you could spend hours just talking about that. So those are the basic seven.